So it looks like we have a new AI video platform. This one was just announced today and it does a lot. Honestly, like all the things. Uh, trust me, you're gonna wanna check this one out because we haven't seen anything like it yet. We've also got some big updates to Pika and Gen 2. Plus, Google has a text to 2D game generator, which, you know, on its own is, I guess, kind of cool, but it's really when you dig in that you see the ramifications of what this really does. Okay, lots to cover. Let's dive in. Kicking off, we have LTX Studio by Lightrix. This is something that I've been predicting for a while, a holistic platform that solves a lot of the challenges that we face when we're making longer form AI film or video, uh, kind of bringing all of the external requirements in under one roof. As a quick FYI, I did get early access to LTX Studio as a partner through Lightrix. Uh, stay tuned because I've got a way for you guys to get early access as well. See, I'm always looking out for you. Uh, but I think as we go through this video, you'll see exactly why I'm excited about it. And listen, I know, Sora, we'll talk about that in a minute, but for now, let's step through this video. The video kicks off with some text to video examples. Everything looks really good here. Uh, I did notice that in this shot, the prompt calls out track in toward villain. Uh, yes, there is camera controls in LTX Studio. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. From there, it moves into this shot to shot panel where you know we get three shots when we prompt futuristic space drama. But here is where things get pretty interesting. It continues generating and we end up with 12 shots. Now, what's interesting is that these are all editable as well, uh, as seen in the next example where uh, they change the prompt out to New York City courtroom drama and yeah, everything repopulates. Now, What's interesting is that if you actually scrub through this, you'll see that our vaguely cyberpunkian city here actually becomes an East Coast city. And, you know, our first shot, uh, kind of that back angle of the character turns into, uh, is that, uh, I guess, like John Doe from Seven? I don't know. I kind of want to see this movie now. Now, here is the really cool part, because as you can see here, we now have uh, timelines for music, dialogue and sound effects. And these all happen on platform. So there's no need to generate externally and bring them in. This is all one-stop shopping. As a quick FYI, uh, this is actually not the UI. You know, this is a sizzle reel that tends to happen. I do have a look at the actual UI coming up in just a minute. We next get a shot of video in-painting with this shot of like bootleg Josh Hartnett and the green car in the background, where obviously via text prompt, we have now changed the green car to a red car. Storyboarding is another feature that I think is super cool. You know, you can basically get a bird's eye view of your entire film and you can actually even swap shots around. And if you need to insert shots, uh, you can do so as well, which is obviously hugely valuable when you're iterating and polishing your film. If you're wondering about timing of your shots, yeah, you can do that as well. We'll take a look at that in one second. Here we've got a bit on casting. It's, you know, basically video in painting, but the important thing to stress here is that you're getting consistent characters. We can swap around lighting. We can generate some solid title cards for our film. Everything here looks spelled correctly. So really this just comes down to user input, meaning all of my titles are gonna be misspelled. We have camera movement controls as well. As you can see, we have controls for horizontal, vertical, our pan, our roll, and our zoom. And LTX Studio also has auto editing. This is likely to time all of the dialogue, uh, sound effects, and music. Just as a quick FYI, the UI that we saw in the sizzle reel is not what LTX Studio actually looks like. Uh, it's fairly common for a launch video to prioritize. Obviously, these are the features that are available, not necessarily like this is what the platform looks like. But they did send this over to me so that I could show you what the platform actually looks like right now. To be honest, I actually prefer this over sort of a flashy iPad type look. As the video closes out, it does mention script, which wasn't highlighted in the sizzle reel, but yes, LTX Studio can, you know, write and generate an entire storyline and script for you. But importantly, it doesn't have to. You can still write your own storyline. That's something that's kind of important to me. All right, now for the elephant in the room, Sora. Uh, yes, Sora is amazing, but A, we don't have it yet, and B, this is doing something different. Sora generates individual shots, whereas this is a platform where you can create full stories. In my last video, I talked to Nico from Corridor, who had some really great advice for anyone that wanted to make an AI film or really do anything creative. Always be creating. It's not about one idea. It's not about one product, or AI or whatever. It doesn't matter. You need to always be making stuff. It, art is not about, I made one movie, I'm good. It's about, I like to make movies, so I make movies every day. So don't wait for the tools. Use the ones that are available to you and make awesome stuff. To which you are probably wondering, when does LTX Studio actually release? Well, I've got good news, not too long away, end of March. 
but I've also got some good news. You can sign up for early access if you use the link down below. Moving on, Pika have updated their platform with a new feature that allows you to add lip sync to your output videos. Audio generations are limited to about three to four seconds, although there is kind of a workaround that I'll show you in just one second. So uh, let's give lip syncing a shot. We're gonna take our old friend Daniela Van Denonk, dressed as a pirate, we haven't seen her in a while, and drop her into the prompt box. Uh, from here, you can just hit this lip sync button and that will provide you with a number of different drop down voices that you can try out. So uh, we're gonna try out Demi. We type in some text and before you know it, we got Daniela speaking. Please stop using me in your videos. It's getting silly. In general, I kind of find the AI voices to be, well, very AI voice sounding, uh, but luckily you can actually add in your own MP3 files as well and it will lip sync to that. So let's give that a shot. So taking some audio of the real Daniela Van Denonk and popping it in, uh, take a listen to that real quick. Uh, she's Dutch, I have no idea what she was saying there. I will say that it can also get a bit finicky depending on the face detection. For example, uh, with this astronaut, here. Um, well, I'll, I'll just play it. I wasn't originally going to get a brain transplant, but then I changed my mind. I cracked me up. So while I did get a whopping six seconds out of it, uh, obviously the face was kind of paralyzed, by the way. Two points to the spaceman for the dad joke. But I did get a pretty good Indiana Jones. X never, ever marks the spot. So I will say it's all definitely a work in progress, but it is progress in the right direction. Uh, here's a couple of quick examples. Dave Valuva posted this one up. Show me the money. And Pika themselves posted this up, uh, which kind of looks like a young John Turturro in a live action Ratatouille remake. Omelette du fromage. That is a deep cut Dexter's Laboratory reference. One idea in terms of extending out your lip sync audio is that you could potentially run one generation and then just slide this whole thing over uh, and then run a second generation and then kind of splice them together in some editing software afterwards. Not gonna lie, might be a bit of a pain, but it is a potential workaround, at least for now. All in all, keep up the great work, Pika. Moving on, not to be outdone, Runway have introduced a new quality of life feature to their motion brush. Uh, mostly what this allows for is to auto select certain areas of your image uh, so that you can have control over them. Uh, it is definitely a quality of life thing. It just makes things a lot faster. You can always erase sections as well. Uh, this is all demonstrated by Rich Klein AI. Now, as soon as I saw that, I figured that this would make a pretty good excuse to try out the dolly zoom shot from Jaws, the Zolly shot, if you will. Well, it was also used in Vertigo. The way this effect was achieved in camera is that the camera itself would dolly in on Roy Scheider while at the same time they would be zooming out on the lens. So it creates that sort of weird parallaxing Vertigo-ish effect. So taking a screenshot and bringing it into the motion brush module, as you can see, we can just sort of, you know, grab selections and just click and uh, those sections are now part of our brush one. Uh, from there, I just took a brush one and cranked the proximity up. Meanwhile, I just selected the entire background and cranked the proximity in the opposite direction. Running that got us this, which actually is not that bad. I mean, it, yes, it, it is weird and warpy and all of that, but I mean, it's also one of the most iconic film shots of all time. So you are judging at a very high bar. Still, that is a cinematic technique that, uh, you know, does work in runway, so you can feel free to bring that into your own AI films. In terms of a more practical use case uh, for this new tool, Nicholas Newbert posted up a speed run of him working with it. You can see him here quickly selecting various tools using uh, proximity, ambience, uh, the horizontal and vertical, as well as camera movement on it. Uh, and then when he generates, yeah, this is this looks very, very good. Rounding out in Runway News, I don't know if you guys caught this, but uh, someone asked Crystal Ball Valenzuela, the CEO of Runway, if uh, Runway outputs would, would look as good as Sora's anytime soon. And his response was better. So whether that was bravado or if we actually will be seeing like Sora level outputs coming out of runway in the next couple of months, I don't know. It's all just very exciting. A lot of stuff is moving very quickly. And yeah, it, this couldn't be a better time to be sharpening your skills with AI video. Rounding out, Google have released, well, Google release Genie, which is a text to 2D game generator. So yeah, game wise, it is very much in the old school NES platformer style. Um, you are not gonna be text prompting for Half-Life 3 here, but here is what's kind of cool about it is that Genie was actually trained unsupervised on 200,000 hours of publicly available video game footage, and it can generate games either off of text 
text or via an image. The games are obviously very simple and apparently only running at one frame a second, so it's not like it would be a very enjoyable experience to play anyways, but the idea behind it is pretty remarkable in that what Genie's doing is actually world creating. Again, Google being Google, I don't think that we'll ever get a chance to play with Genie, but I think the important part here is the underlying research, which I think will appear in some way in the future. Oh, and if you did happen to miss the last video I did where I gave a talk about AI to Hollywood, I do invite you to check that out. That video was a lot of fun. It's coming up next. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.